Hi, this is Pastor Daryl Myatt from Keller, Texas. Today is Wednesday, October 11th, 2017. This channel is all about world news, Bible prophecy, end time events, and the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's get right into it today out of Israel National News. Headline says, U.S. military flies bombers over Korean Peninsula. U.S. military flies two Air Force B-1B Lancer bombers over the Korean Peninsula in a joint drill with South Korea and Japan. I think Donald Trump is saying, um, hey, Rocket Man, check this out. I could bomb you right now if I wanted to, but I'm not. So maybe stop trying to develop ballistic missiles to strike America, or I may have to do this for real. Just saying. Flying bombers over the Korean Peninsula. And Japan is with them. Of course Japan is with them. North Korea's launched two or three missiles that went right over Japan and landed into the sea. What country wants to see some missile flying over their country going, Oh, wow, okay, glad they didn't decide to land it here. The times, they are upon us. Out of CNN, U.S. Army chief says no risk-free options on North Korea. I know, pulling a story up out of CNN. Um, U.S. Army Chief of Staff General Mark Miley made clear what a bind the U.S. is in when it comes to solving the challenge of North Korea's nuclear and missile program, stating there are no risk-free options, but said there's also not an indefinite amount of time to solve this crisis said we don't want a war, but nothing we're seeing is without risk. said it would be horrible, but it would also be a horrible mistake to allow them to have intercontinental ballistic missiles that could hit Los Angeles or New York City. True that. True that. Out of Fox News, Iran's secret sites linked to nuclear weapons development revealed President Donald Trump is expected this week to decertify the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the JCPOA, better known simply as the Iran Nuke Deal, declaring that the agreement reached in 2015 by the U.S. and five other international powers is not in America's best interest. Then it will be tossed back to Congress, which will have 60 days to decide whether to reimpose hefty pre-2015 sanctions. You know, the IAEA is saying, oh, well, uh, Iran is in compliance, but they haven't inspected their military sites. Iran's nuclear core. A 52-page investigative report by the National Council of Resistance of Iran entitled Iran's Nuclear Core Uninspected Military Sites. This will be released... This was released, I think, today. Haven't seen what it says yet. But their nuclear program is far from being halted. They have two nuclear programs. One civilian, but the other is military, with its goal of giving Iran its first nuclear bomb. Make no mistake, people. That's their intention. That's why they were busted for trying to obtain nuclear technology 32 times last year. By Germany. Not by America, not by some other group, but by Germany. Out of the Times of Israel, Schumer blasts Trump's indecisiveness in pushing off embassy move. He says, hey, it's time to show the world the U.S. acknowledges Jerusalem as Israel's capital. It would be perfect uh, right now as Jerusalem is celebrating 50 years. It'd be perfect for the United States to say, oh, yeah, guess what? We also recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Guess we'll see how soon that might happen. Out of Ynet News, future of Hamas's military wing is not part of Palestinian reconciliation talks. The future of Hamas's military wing will not be discussed as part of reconciliation talks with Fatah and Gaza officials. Hamas, Fatah, and the Palestinians are trying to reach an agreement and reconcile <clears throat> they can't even agree with each other, but the world wants them to agree with Israel and make peace with Israel. 
don't think that's going to happen. You know, real peace won't happen until Christ returns, just so you know. Out of Ynet News, Iran's armed forces say it's time to teach U.S. new lessons. A spokesman for Iran's armed forces warned President Donald Trump against threatening the Islamic Republic and said Iran forces would teach the United States new lessons. Okay. Always willing to learn something new. Um, out of Ynet News, U.S. offers millions for Hezbollah terrorists suspected of planning attack on U.S. soil. The United States has a couple of guys here. Uh, Talal Hamia and Fuad Shukar. Ready to pay millions. This, the first guy, Talal, is worth $7 million for his capture. The other is $5 million. United States government knows there's some Hezbollah operatives planning attacks right here in America. And the two of them are worth $12 million. And yet the government seems to want to try to take away our guns. You no. Know, sorry. Locked and loaded. Ready to go. You know, a, a famous Japanese general was interviewed. Uh, who was part of the military back during Pearl Harbor. And the question came up of, why didn't you just invade America? And he said, that would have been suicide because everyone knows most Americans have guns. There'd be a gun behind every blade of grass, he was quoted as saying. Yeah, the right to bear arms not only protects us from foreign invaders, but also from a tyrannical government, our own government. Keep that in mind. Interesting story out of Fox News. It says FBI cites black extremists as new domestic terrorist threat. Interesting because just a few days ago, my friend Kevin sent me a post saying white American males are far more dangerous terrorists than Muslim immigrants. Yeah, that went over real well with me. Um, seems the FBI disagrees with my friend says black extremists are the new domestic terrorist threat. Putting together uh, bids to go after police. Wanting to go after cops. Killing cops just because they're cops. FBI came out with this. Also out of Fox News, Operation Bible Smuggling, How Christian Texts Infiltrate North Korea. Huh. Interesting story reading how people are trying to get the Word of God into North Korea. I had a friend several years back who was involved in getting Bibles to China. And she actually went there and was like having backpacks filled with little Bibles and had to move around at night for fear of being caught. And I thought, how cool is that? I, I want to do that. And she's like, well, here's how much it costs. And I was like, I'm out. I, I can't. I'm sorry. I'd love to help. Uh, you know, I'll help buy a few Bibles. And she's like, oh, I promise we'll get them into China. And I'm like, nice. Okay, then. Um, a lot of people trying to get the word into North Korea. That's good. It's a good thing. North Korea is the most anti-Christian country on the planet now for three years in a row. You can easily be killed for preaching Christ and Him crucified as the only way to God the Father. Kim Jong-un wants to be worshipped. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Because the devil also wanted to be worshipped. Huh. Let's get into the word. What's the word say? In Psalm 119, verse 89, 119, verse 89, Psalm 119, the longest chapter in all of Scripture. Little Bible trivia there for you. Um, Psalm 119, verse 89, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Forever, thy word is settled in heaven. You know, what do you think? What do you think about this?
the Holy Bible. What do you call it? What is it to you? Is it important? Is it God's Word to you? Is it just another book? Is it the all-time world's bestseller? Is it the most stolen book of all time? Is it some Bronze Age mythology full of fairy tales to you? What is it? What does the Holy Bible mean to you? You see, because to me, it is God's Word. It comes straight from God. The Bible's pretty clear on this. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. This is God's word. You'll get a lot of arguments from people saying, well, it's this, it's that. Maybe it's not God's word, but it contains God's word. It's it's mostly God's word. It wasn't written by God, it was written by men. You know, you hear all these different debates. But what it is to you is probably most important here. Um, I think it's the God, of, the Word of God. It's it's God's Word. He spoke these words and had men write them down. Um, it could create some battle lines here. This could cause a lot of arguments among your friends. There is a battle raging, though. There's a battle raging between light and darkness, between good and evil between truth and lies. Scripture is God's word, and it's completely true from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 and everything in between. How long before the Bible becomes banned? Who knows? Who knows? In Matthew 6, verse 33, this is Jesus talking. He says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, there's, there's a lot of things you can live for in your life. You can live for a lot of things. Uh, you can live for your career. You can live for your physical appearance. You can live for success, you can live for money, you can live for pleasure, you can live for drugs or alcohol or sex. You can live for all kinds of things. There was a time when I was seeking my own glory. Was fairly successful in the acting industry. Made some 105 commercials, a lot of TV shows, movies, things like that doing a lot of print ads, a lot of, um, <laughs> did a lot of circulars and um, mail ads and, and things like that, catalogs. But I was seeking my own glory, seeking fame and fortune. Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And hey, guess what? I'll add all these other things to you. Jesus is telling us how to live a life without worry, without anxiety. You know, put God first in your life. Is God in the number one position in your life? God first, and then family, then career, or whatever else falls after that? I mean, let's, let's talk about that. I mean, we all have bills to pay. We all have jobs or do something to earn money. By the way, this is not something I do to earn money. I do this out of love, out of service. Maybe I'll earn a, a crown or two in heaven. Don't know. We'll see. Um, I have a full-time job. I have a couple of part-time jobs. I stay pretty busy. My wife and I just opened a cafe recently. Um, 
<laughs> so, needless to say, I'm pretty busy, as I'm sure you are as well. But a lot of people are worried these days. A lot of people living in anxiety. Never in history of America has there been so many people on prescription medication than there is today. How about your line of work? Is what you're doing giving God glory? Do you seek Him first with what you're doing? I have to say, at all of my jobs, people know about my ministry. They know what I do. A lot of them watch what I do. Um, your goal should be to honor God in everything you do. So maybe ask yourself, as I'm doing this job, what's my goal? You know, if your goal is just to make money, then maybe you have the wrong goal. Your goal should be to give honor to God, to glorify God, to work an honest day's work and have integrity and have a good testimony in the workplace. Be a good example, a shining light. When the day is done, you want to have a good name and a good reputation. Proverbs 22, verse 1 says, uh, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. So we need to seek first the kingdom of God. You know, if you want to have a life free of anxiety and worry and trouble and fear, well, we're always going to have trouble. But we need to put God's kingdom before everything else. Seek Him first and watch what happens. God does send us a helper. In John 14, possibly one of my most favorite books in all of the Bible, John 14. Starting in verse 16, again, this is Jesus talking. He says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I don't know how many countless hundreds, I'm not joking, hundreds of Muslims that have argued with me that this is speaking of Muhammad. When Jesus spoke in John 14, verse 26, but the comforter, they're like, oh, that's Muhammad Jesus is speaking of. Really? Because right there in verse 26, Jesus is clearly saying, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Jesus said the world can't see him or receive him. I think the world pretty openly received Muhammad not so much the Holy Spirit. A helper for all occasions. You know, wouldn't it be nice to have like this personal cell phone to God where you could hit him on speed dial. God, I need some help. Got a problem here. You know, wouldn't that be nice? Um, but we do. We do have that. You see, the problem is most people don't realize it. We have a direct line to God. We can boldly come before the throne because of what Christ did on the cross. Even the disciples who were there receiving Jesus' teaching, they couldn't live successfully without divine intervention. You know, that's Jesus told them, hey, you need to wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit to come before starting to share your faith. Um, Jesus said it in John 16, verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. If I don't go away, the Helper won't come. When Jesus was here on earth, he couldn't be with everyone that needed him all at once, like he can now. He was limited by the flesh, very much like we are in that regard. Um, but now, with the Holy Spirit that dwells within you, 
He's constantly present. He's with you always. Every Christian can become the person that God created you to be because of the Holy Spirit. And through the helper's knowledge, through the comforter's knowledge and power, we can be devoted Christ followers, even in a fallen society, even in a wicked and perverse generation, even in a corrupt culture. The Spirit's work includes guiding us and leading us, opening our minds to God's truth, giving us supernatural energy when we're dead dog tired, and comforting us during times of sorrow. Hmm. God loves people so much that he provided this ever-present help in times of need to everyone who places their faith in Jesus Christ. You know, when you're in trouble or when you're in need, you can call upon the Holy Spirit and instantly connect to the power of God. Just a few minutes ago, I had a friend uh, comment saying, uh, you know, prayer doesn't do anything. And I was like, man, you're doing something wrong. Because prayer is powerful. I've witnessed the power of prayer. I've seen prayer answered in my life time and time again. Don't tell me prayer doesn't do anything. In John 12, verse 28, Jesus said, Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. You know, this is the third time that scripture records that God spoke in an audible voice to or about Jesus. Okay, the first time was at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, and the second time was at the transfiguration of Jesus. You know, when Peter, James, and John were there. This verse makes it very clear that it was a voice the Father spoke in. God the Father spoke. But there's, if you read about it, there's different reports about the same event. You see, some people heard a voice and they thought, oh, it was an angel who spoke. Others thought it was the thunder. They're like, oh, I heard thunder. I, I think this kind of proves the point that the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14. A carnal man, a natural man, with a hard heart that doesn't know God, will always find some natural explanation for the supernatural, even if he heard an audible voice from God. Oh, that was thunder. I didn't hear anything. What were you talking about? I didn't hear him say, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. I heard kaboom. That's what I heard. You know, it's a hard heart that keeps people from perceiving spiritual truths and stops them from understanding things of God. You know, when a person doesn't understand God's word, Satan finds no resistance when he comes in to steal it away. Pretty easy to steal from a baby, right? A hard heart can keep someone from remembering. You know, that's not to say that, that facts or, or scriptures can't be memorized, but it's the spiritual lessons learned that have been forgotten. In the same way, some people can quote scripture all day long or remember what the sermon was about, but they can't perceive the spiritual life in it or retain what they receive because of their hard heart. You know, Jesus didn't need to hear this, this audible voice of God because he had a more sure word of prophecy than the audible voice of God from heaven. 2 Peter 1, verses 18 through 20. Jesus knew the voice of the Old Testament scriptures that spoke of Christ being glorified, and he could hear the Father's voice in his heart as he had on so many other occasions. He had that direct line to God the Father. He could hear God speaking in his, in his heart, probably in his mind. Could hear him. They could communicate probably almost without speaking. You know, that audible voice didn't come to reassure Jesus, but it came to those who had ears to hear that they might believe. How's your hearing today? Do you have ears to hear? Do you have eyes to see? Because there's a lot of things happen. 
a lot of things happening right now that some people are very spiritually blinded to. God's Word speaks of things that happen toward the times of the end, before Christ returns. But only those with eyes to see and ears to hear are going to be able to discern them. Only those who know God and know God's Word are going to be able to understand these things. That's why a lot of us are going to need to teach others, especially when it gets down to crunch time. And I know a lot of you will say, oh, we're not going to be here when that happens. Okay, great. But if you're wrong, you better be prepared. Just saying. Jesus didn't say, he who endures until I come back will be saved. He said, he who endures to the end will be saved. We've got quite a mission before us. It's a very daunting task. But you know something? When the light meets the darkness, the light always overcomes the darkness. Walk in the victory that's ours through Jesus Christ. And understand, we don't walk to victory. We don't walk toward victory. We're not even walking from victory. We're walking in victory. We are victorious because of what Jesus did on the cross. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Know it. Trust it. And share it with everyone you can. I love you guys. God bless you. Good Lord willing. I'll see you again tomorrow.